Hey folks, here today, back to talk to you about Steven Universe. This time we're on episode 16 through 18. Just gonna dive right in. Another pretty good block. Don't know if it was quite as good as the last block, but it had some really good stuff in it. Uh, so let's start right off. Uh, episode 16, which was Steven Sword something. It had Steven and Sword in the title, and I don't really remember the rest. Uh, but this one was about Basically, uh, Pearl turns out to be a master sword fighter, because of course she is. Uh, that fits just perfectly in with her character. Uh, and after watching some samurai movies, which uh, definitely a loving parody of uh, like anime and samurai movie, and to a lesser extent, uh, Hong Kong cinema tropes going on there. Uh, definitely a fan of the, those things was working on this episode. Uh, was this one of Ian Jones Cordy's episodes? Because I know he's into that stuff. But a lot of people in Western animation enjoy that kind of stuff, so... Anyway, um... So while she's demonstrating, Stephen basically distracts her and she gets stabbed. So that momentary blip there was a result of me first sneezing and then completely losing the thread and then basically speaking word salad for a sentence or two. But, uh, to pick up where we were, Pearl is demonstrating sword fighting, Stephen distracts her by asking for her to demonstrate flashier moves like the ones in the movie, and she gets stabbed by her own hologram and basically turns back into her gem which we had an interesting little tidbit here that apparently even Steven didn't know, which is that gems sometimes turn into... Like, gems can be damaged and turn into their gem, uh, which apparently really is, like, their real self, and their physical body is... sounds like basically a projection, uh, which, again, makes it really interesting that Steven is half gem, half human. Like, how does that work? <laughs> Excuse me. I imagine we'll find out at some point. Anyway, uh, most of the episode is Steven attempting to basically hang out with the Pearl hologram in lieu of Pearl because he misses Pearl. And it's actually really sweet. He's desperately trying to make it be more like Pearl and failing because all it is is a combat hologram. Now, what they seemed to be setting up for, and what I thought would happen all episode, was that, like, eventually the hologram would endanger Steven, and Pearl would emerge at the last minute to protect him. Because that's really kind of the role. She's the one who works to protect him. She's the caretaker of the group. She's, you know, the team mom or the big sister. Uh, I've said before... Amethyst is my favorite character so far, and that's still true, but Pearl is definitely moving up the ranks. Uh, I really like how she's a character that could be really annoying, because she's bossy, and she's a neat freak, and all that kind of stuff that normally is code for a very annoying character. But she's not. She She's actually, like, caring and... Like, her relationship with Steven is very sweet. Uh, I think her and Steven's relationship with each other is my favorite in the show so far. Even while I think I still like Amethyst more as a character. But if they keep doing stuff like this, I think Pearl might overtake her. Uh, plus, she gets, like, cool sword fighting powers and stuff. And making duplicates of herself. I mean, that's cool stuff. She's basically a ninja. Um... Which, I mean, shape-shifting is great, too, but... Swordplay, man. Anyway, um... But they actually didn't go that route of having her emerge to save him instead. Uh, what happened was that Steven had to defeat the hologram himself. And once he did that, it reverted to... Like, the implication I got, at least was that the reason Pearl was taking so long to recover was because her energy or whatever was being used to maintain the hologram. And once it was defeated and sent back, she was able to recover almost immediately. I think that's what they were kind of suggesting with, you know, sparkles. 
Uh, like I said, it was a good episode. It was, you know, basically a teaching moment for Stephen, learning about patience and stuff. Uh, but mostly for us, it was getting to really see, like, how close he and Pearl really are. Uh, she is, you know, with his dad kind of a bit absent and his mom, you know, dead, it really feels like Pearl is his, the closest thing he has to a parental figure. And, you know, that's, that's a, a nice thing to have. So, I like that relationship. Uh, plus, Pearl's exasperation is always fun. Next episode was the real standout of the group for me. Uh, Lion to the movie. And the moment I saw that title, I was like, yes! And then Connie shows up, and I'm like, double yes! Because I've been asking for more Connie and more Lion, and here we get an episode that's devoted to Connie and Lion. And, and Steve. Um, and it's great fun. Uh, it's great seeing, like, Steven dealing with insecurity that the weirdness of his life will scare Connie off. And Connie dealing with the insecurity that Stephen will find how like mundane her life is boring, and yet really they find each other's lives really interesting. Uh, and then you throw into that lion who just gets weirder and more interesting and cooler with every appearance. It really seems like lion can basically do anything as long as it's kind of weird. He's a very mysterious character, uh, compounded by the fact that he doesn't talk. Honestly, they keep talking about how mysterious Garnet is, but I think Lion is a lot more mysterious, because, I mean, Garnet is a gem, they have magical powers. Sure, whatever. She has magical powers and she's kind of stoic. Lion, like, what is he? I mean, he's obviously not a normal lion. So what is he? Where did he come from? Why is he like he is? Why does he have a sword in his head? How does he do these things? How much of what's going on does he really know and understand? Like, how intelligent is he? Is, is you know, he's just surrounded by questions, and it's great, uh, because it's an excuse to just be weird. And Lion gets to be really weird. He gets to, you know, open dimensional portals with his roar, and have a sword in his head that is used to play energy tennis with the monster. Uh, that was, that was nice. Uh, nice little callback to the gag earlier about tennis. Uh, good, good use of good old Chekhov's gun there. Now if there's tennis rackets on the wall in Act 1, you have to play sword, energy ball, Zelda tennis with the boss in Act 3, or something like that. Um, and just generally a really fun episode that deepened the mystery around Lion and further explored Stephen and Connie's relationship, which, again, definitely something I like and want to see more of. Um, the two of them are just really cute. They're really sweet together. Um, that really is what kind of characterizes Stephen Universe so far, is that it is simultaneously silly and weird and energetic in what I've defined before as the meme fountain style of show. Um, but it's also very sincere, uh, which is not usually a feature of that style of show. To describe what I mean by a meme fountain, uh, kind of the defining meme fountain cartoon, uh, in my opinion, would be Family Guy. Uh, which, for all that it is actually pretty terrible in a lot of respects, was really successful and I think has had a lot of influence. And so the thing with Family Guy is that a plot that makes sense and characters that are believable are secondary to generating lots and lots and lots of short clips that can easily be snipped out and gifted or put on YouTube and spread around as memes. Um, now, I say Family Guy is kind of the, the defining first one that created it, but you look at shows like Regular Show uh, is a good meme fountain. Uh, most, like, 
most cartoons created for the web, uh, stuff like llamas with hats or, you know, anything in that subgenre is basically meme fountains. It's all designed to just generate lots and lots of quick gags, short clips that can be easily spread around as memes. Uh, as a general rule, those tend to be less sincere, less concerned with thematic cohesion or, you know, exploring characters in any kind of depth or anything like that. You know, at the polar opposite end, you've got shows that are all about exploring character and not co so concerned. Although they may generate a few memes, they're not, like, just trying to churn out maximum number of memes per second of show. And over at that extreme, you will find shows like My Little Pony Friendship is Magic. Um, shows like Legend of Korra. Um, and then you've got the shows that are in between. And there's really two big ones that I've seen that are in between uh, that kind of combine features of both. And that would be uh, Adventure Time and Steven Universe where you've got a very high level of weird, a lot of silliness, not a lot of worry about creating a believable or coherent world, which I feel is a bugbear that a lot of fantastic stuff has. Uh, it gets more concerned with making the world work than making the story and characters work, or, you know having some, you know, making some thematic sense or being, you know, non-awful. Uh, instead, it's all about a guided tour of a world. Um, the collaborative nature, I think, of animation and the, and the detail-oriented nature of it, I think, to a degree, tends to mitigate that. But it is still an issue that you get, especially in books and, like, literary science fiction. You get a lot of that. But... Instead, you've got this, like, you know, generating lots of weird and lots of silly. But, on, you know, kind of nonsensical. But underneath, you know, you've got pink lines that bark holes in time. Or whatever it is that line is doing. But underneath that, you've got characters who have real feelings and who make you feel real feelings. You know... Nobody really is going to get upset over, you know, bad things happening to Rigby or Meg Griffin because they're not real characters. They're caricatures. They, they exist to entertain and amuse and be funny and only that. Um... Now, I'm saying all this, and it's entirely possible that in the several years since I last watched either of those shows, they have evolved considerably. Uh, and they do now have, you know, real characters. I am virtually certain that that's not the case for Family Guy. Uh, might have happened with a regular show. And I should make clear, meme fountains are not bad. It's not that one kind is superior to the other. Um, certainly, you know, like, regular show, I drifted away from it after a while, but it was a good show, uh, while I watched it. You know, I enjoyed it. Uh, there's less to sink my teeth into than something like a Steven Universe or an Adventure Time, um, but it's a good show. You know, but Steven Universe has this, you know, sincerity and this sweetness to it, uh, and sweetness is really hard to pull off without it becoming cloying, you know? Shows that aim for sweetness, historically, have been terrible. But, somehow, in the last few years, shows have been getting better at it. And so, you get something like Steven Universe, where... 
yeah, a lot of my favorite interactions are just, oh, that's sweet. You know, there's an innocent, you know, it's a total lack of cynicism to the character relationships. Stephen is completely open-hearted and unguarded and, yeah, innocent. And so he has these relationships that are just open and sweet and childlike in a good way. And so both the first two episodes really showcase those, one between him and Pearl and one between him and Connie. Like, just the little things, like them holding hands to, to buy movie tickets. And it's like, you know, in another show, the implication would be, you know, boyfriend-girlfriend. Even though they're like, what, eight, ten at most? But that's not necessarily what's happening here. It's a possibility that, you know, but it's not the only way it could go. It could just be that, you know, they want to hold hands. And most shows aren't, you know, they don't allow that level of innocence. They don't allow holding hands just because they like each other. There has to be. A, a romantic or sexual element to it. There has to be, you know, an adult awareness of what that usually means. And I don't feel like that's necessarily the case here in Steven Universe. I, I feel like this is a child's world and a child's understanding of the world at work. And I think that's where a lot of its magic is coming from. And that's kind of, I think, what's at play in the third episode, uh, Beach Party, which I'm, I'm going to be honest here, it was all right. I don't feel like it was as good as the last few episodes have been. Uh, you know, definitely the weakest of the three that I'm covering this week, which is not a bad thing. Um, but, I mean, what to say about it? There... There was fighting between a monster and the gems, which has become kind of the standard episode opening. You know, the standard setup of gems fighting monster. The gems... Uh, Garnet gets smashed into the wall of the pizza place, and the owner gets mad, so he bans them from the pizza place. And none of them care, because they don't need to eat, and according to Amethyst, the pizza's not very good. So... Stephen gets everybody together for a beach party to make up because he can't stand the idea of people not liking him. Um, and that's kind of what I'm talking about, where Stephen has this very innocent, very childlike view of the world to the, you know, gems. They don't care because they don't even like the pizza. But to Stephen, what matters is not the pizza, but that they're banned from a pizza place, and that's bad. And he wants to fix it. And he wants everyone to get along. Because he's just kind of like this fundamentally sweet kid. He wants everyone to get along. He wants people to like each other. He, he wants everyone to be happy. And he doesn't see why that can't be the case. So he'll get everyone together for a party and make everyone be happy. Because parties are happy. You know, that's, that's his logic. And, and of course the monster returns and they fight it together. And then peace is made because they fought a monster together. Yay. Um, basically, it was, it was, you know, it wasn't a bad episode. It was just a predictable episode, nothing particularly special or exciting, you know. And I mean, we're 18 episodes in. If you're gonna have a, you know, fine, we're just gonna do a standard episode this week. 18 episodes in is an acceptable point at which for that to happen, you know? You've already gotten 17 solid episodes under your belt. You know, you've explored a bunch of different things the show could do. One week of standard issue, not pushing ourselves in any way, isn't going to kill a show. Now, if I'm here two, three weeks from now and every episode has been, yeah. Standard Steven Universe stuff. 
then it gets to be a problem. Because uh, somewhere around the mid-20s, probably going to want to start trying to change the definition of what standard Steven Universe episode is, if you want to keep going. Now, as I record this, yesterday, my Tumblr feed was occupied by basically two things. Uh, the very sad passing of Sir Terry Pratchett, which is a huge blow. Huge, huge blow. Um, one of my favorite authors, one of the most influential people on me. I know that can be a little hard to tell because I am spectacularly bad at being funny, but he really is a profound influence on me and my way of viewing the world. And something to do with two Steven Universe episodes that just aired. I don't know anything about them. I don't know what happened in them. I just know that everybody is going slightly ridiculous about them. Like, the last time I saw my Tumblr blow up about a show, uh, I got spoiled for the finale. Like, to this degree, I got spoiled for the finale of Korra. So, I'm kind of... Like, I'm not actively avoiding mentions of Steven Universe on Tumblr, but I'm just... I'm glad it's now uh, Friday, because I don't go on Tumblr much on the weekend, so hopefully by the time I am on it again, uh, the spoilers will... You know, people will be done posting spoilers or whatever. Um, mostly people have just been posting reaction GIFs, like the title of the episode, which I don't even remember what it is. It's something very innocuous. And then just pictures of themselves screaming or whatever. Or characters, you know, being ridiculous. Characters from other shows, mostly. Uh, so, I haven't been spoiled. I don't know what happens. I hope to remain unspoiled, but I'm thinking, uh, I got the episode numbers, I think it's 48 and 49, I'll double check that, but I'm thinking I will just, like, those are probably the next things, unless something, somebody suggests something earlier, those will probably be, probably be the next things I watch live, uh, and record myself watching live. So, that's well off in the future, that, that is you know, 30 episodes away, so 10 weeks from now. That's quite some time. Uh, I think it'll be late summer by then, if I've done the math right. But, whatever. Uh, see you all next week when I do the next block of three episodes.